everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I haven't been vlogging a lot lately and um, yeah, now I'm kind of back with a new background as you can see. It took forever to stick on. My mom helped me with it. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk about Women of Will. It's a series of five plays performed every week at the Colorado Theatre. I'm gonna post all the dates and their Facebook page down in the description so um, if you want to go just yeah they sell out make sure you get your tickets quickly because it sells out every time and it's just so fantastic. Women of Will is a play cycle about Shakespearean women incredibly beautifully performed by Nigel Go and Tina Packer. If you need some visuals that's what the poster looks like. What I really like about it, besides the humor, especially in the third part and the easygoing atmosphere, um, as well as the chemistry between the actors, is um, that it's basically, well, it, sh it basically shows extracts from different plays uh, by Shakespeare, mostly in chronological order accompanied by explanations which is um, very helpful and educational so you walk out of the theater having also learned something. What I also found really helpful was that Tina Packer was pointing out specific uh, bits we should listen for um, to you know for instance to get this um, connection between the sexual and the spiritual. What I also really like is that you can ask questions after the performance. Tina and I met, I, I didn't know who she was, so. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as I was concerned, you know, she was uh, just another, you know, just an old English slapper, I suppose. Uh, so we have a very useful relationship and, uh, you know, a shared vocabulary, and so we've always got on really well. And, um, we, you know, our working relationship was very fluid and very trusting from the beginning. So as it's developed, once she asked me to do this project, you know, it's, um, she listens to what I say and, you know, Eric too, and, and takes it on board. And we've really, the, you know, the, the project as it stands now is something that has been shaped by the three of us, I think. I mean, Eric's had massive input in terms of, you know, cutting and all that. So, and, um, you know, and uh, I think, I shouldn't speak for Tina, but I think she's, you know, kind of grateful that, you know, she's not an icon to us, you know, she's just a peer, in a sense, you know. Um, and it's weird, because when, when we go on the road, you know, we went to the Los Angeles Women's Shakespeare, and it was like they were all we're not worthy, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I forget what an influence she's had in the States, and what a, you know, just, I mean, for, for, for women involved in Shakespeare, especially, uh, women that are running their own theatres, Tina's really been uh, the leader. I mean, she's really blazed a path for them. Uh, Tina, I'm wondering if you can uh, briefly tell uh, people here in the audience what they might expect from part two. Yes. Uh, you heard this kind of spiritual sexual language, which is in the sonnet. And so what happens now is that Shakespeare's... The sonnet that we did the sonnet that we did at the end of the play. Shakespeare now really almost, well, begins in Love's Labour's Lost, but in Romeo and Juliet, completely transforms the way he writes about women. He stops projecting on them and he writes from the inside of them. And women suddenly become as powerful and we follow the nuance of their thought and their feeling. And Romeo and Juliet's an equal play. So we look at the sexual, spiritual plays that come immediately after this and see this merging and um, it transforms his writing. So we're going into this very intense period for Shakespeare, it's the period of the sonnets as well, as we see what happens to him as he shifts his thinking almost entirely about who women are. I could keep talking about what I enjoyed in the first three parts. Um, maybe I'll do another video at some point. I'm gonna also upload the full conversation um, right after this, or the full questioning if you want me to, so if you want me to, just leave it down below and, um, you know, if there's enough interest, I'm gonna upload that.
Um, I must apologize, it's not perfectly filmed as I was filming with a flip and the light condition wasn't too ideal. But as usual, it's about the content, I think. I want to end this vlog with the question of the day. Who is your favorite female Shakespearean character? Leave it in the comments below. Um, I'll probably get a lot of Juliets, I'm sure. My personal favorite is Viola from Twelfth Night. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.